In this video, we will be reviewing the Kirithungol Legendary Legion. Hi guys, how are we all doing? I'm Top Table Steve. Now before we get stuck into this Legion, please do take a moment. If you're not already subscribed, to consider clicking the subscribe button. If you do that, click the bell, you'll be notified every time we release a new video. Uh, we're releasing videos pretty thick and fast at the moment, and especially these Legion videos as the nice, short and sweet videos for us to make, quite easy to edit, uh, so we're getting them out quickly, which is good. And I'm really enjoying doing them as well. Um, normally theorizing lists, like I've said before, isn't my bag, uh, but I think maybe I might be getting hooked on it because I can't stop looking at these legions. <laughs> as well as subscribing guys, please do, if you like this video, click the like button. Clicking that like button really does help us above everything else, um, as well as putting comments below and getting involved in the chat, which is what I've really, really been um, happy about. The last couple of videos for these legendary legions have sparked off a lot of debate and a lot of chat and it's been a lot of fun reading it and answering back and going backwards and forwards and you give you guys give me reasons why you think i'm wrong and vice versa it's been a lot of fun so please keep that going because that's great also guys top table gaming is on facebook we have an amazing group uh so please do search and join and come and get stuck in anything hobby gaming related or even if it's just to hang out and chat to some like-minded individuals our group is the place for you if you search Top Table Gaming Community, you'll find us. Just click join and either myself or Jay will accept you. All right, let's get stuck into this Kirith Ungol Legendary Legion. Straight off the bat, we'll jump as we do into the composition. Now, let's jump straight into what your options are in this list. So obviously we have Shagrat, Gorbag, Shelob. They're your big named heroes. Uh, from there, we have a Mordor Orakai Captain, a Mordor Orc Shaman, a Mordor Orc Captain, a normal Mordor Orc and Mordor Orakai. It's... Got the best of both worlds, I think, this Legion. There's enough in there to do different kinds of lists, um, but you've got some really big names. The thing I like about this one is the big names are big names. We all know they're really cool profiles. I mean, especially Shagrat and Shelob, they're huge. They're really, really good profiles, really powerful, and can flip a game on its head, uh, no trouble. But you don't see them that often, and I think it's because they're part of a list where there are so many options, and people really like using wraiths, and wraiths are, are so beneficial in certain lists. Um, Shagrat, Shelob, Gorbag, they kind of get overlooked a little bit. You do see them, I'm not saying you don't see them at all, but... I don't think you see them as much as you should. So what this Legendary Legion does, it pushes them to the forefront um, and it's going to hopefully, hopefully get people using this Legion more and we'll get to see more of them on the table because I think this is a pretty powerful Legion. So what are you getting for your points with these profiles? Well, let's have a look a little bit deeper into what you're getting. First off, we have Shagrat. He's a fight five, strength five, defense five, three attack, Three Wounds, Courage 4, Uruk. He has three Might, three Will, three Fate. He's pretty awesome. That is a strong profile. He has access to Strike, Strength and Challenge. He has the special rule Blood and Glory, which basically means if he kills another enemy hero in combat, he regains a point of Might that he used previously in the game. And he has options for Heavy Armor and the Shield of Kirith Ungol. Now, the Shield of Kirith Ungol is a great piece of kit. Basically, what it means, any turn that Shagrat charges and wins the dual roll, he gains the knockdown rule, so he's knocking you down as if he was a cavalry model, which gives him double attacks against you, which is six attacks. Six attacks at strength five. You don't want to be getting hit by that shield, let me tell you. Next in line is Gorbag. He's fight four, strength four, defense five. Two attacks, two wounds, courage four. Three might, one will, one fate. He has access to strike and strength, and he has the special rule Orcish Brawler. What Orcish Brawler does, I think this is a really cool rule uh, and makes Gorbag stand out amongst the other sort of named captain uh, type heroes. If he is ever outnumbered in a fight, he gains plus one to his fight characteristic and his attacks characteristic. So he becomes fight five and has three attacks, uh, which is pretty awesome. And he's going to come in handy, especially if you're playing those horde armies, because they're not going to be able to help themselves. They will trap you or, you know, get multiple foes in and you're getting the benefit of the extra dice and the extra fight value. So it's great. You also have the option to buy a shield, which for me is uh, it's a given. You, you buy a shield, you give him that extra point of defense, just makes him a little bit more sturdy and long lasting. So on to Shelob. I think Shelob being in this list is my favorite part. Shelob is fight seven, strength seven, defense seven. She only has one attack, uh, but she has six wounds and she's Courage 4. She has no might, she has six will and no fate. Her Wargate is her large Venomous Fangs, uh, which gives her the Venom special rule, which means that she's re-rolling all fail to wound rolls. 
She has the monstrous charge special rule, which means it doesn't matter whether you're infantry or cavalry or whatever. If she charges in, she's getting the knockdown rules and she's doubling her attack. One of the downsides uh, to Shelob is the special rule survival instincts. If Shelob takes a wound, she has to take a courage check. If she fails that courage check, she flees the board. Um, I think this puts a lot of people off using Shelob, um, but it's not as terrible as you think. She's quite hard to wound in the first place, but having them six will uh, to, you know, up that courage roll uh, really does come in handy. And she's courage four base, you know, you've got to get six off two dice with six wool in your store. It's not too bad. She has swift movement and she moves 10 inches uh, as a base movement. So, you know, the fact that she's got swift movement, she can move up, she can move vertically. It, it doesn't affect her. It's the next best thing to fly. And it means that she's going to take your opponents by surprise when she's able to jump up on that wall or that parapet and uh, charge her foe. She causes terror, which is going to help her pick the fights that she's in, whether you've got priority or not. She also has the special rule caught in a web. What caught in a web is, is basically it's her own uh, brutal power attack. Um, instead of making strikes, you can choose to use this special rule and you inflict a strength 7 hit on the uh, opponent. If the hit is successful, they are then wrapped in a web and they're classed as paralysed as per the paralysed rule. For me, that's going to be really handy. Um, you can either do it to something that is a big threat and you know you're going to get in there and you can paralyse them and take them out of the game for a couple of turns um, and pick off all the easy, easy foe. Um, it's a good rule. It's a very good rule. It's very cool. And then she has Lone Hunter, which as you'd expect, Shelob can't be part of somebody else's warband. She doesn't answer to anyone. She's Shelob. So that's all the named characters uh, that we have in the list. We're on to the Mordor Orakai Captain. He's fight five, strength five, defense five, two attacks, two wounds, courage four, and he's two, one, one for might, will and fate. He has access to heroic march and he can also, at an extra cost, take a bow, a shield, or a two-handed mace. He's a good, sturdy infantry warrior, uh, solid. I really like the Uruk profile. I've said it before and I'll stand by it. It is obviously one of the best in the game. They're the strongest evil infantry that I can think of uh, that have a, a rounded good profile. On from the Urux is the Mordor Orc Shaman. This is another pretty cool option in the list uh, and just adds a little something extra and gives your opponent something else to think about. The fight three, strength three, defense five, one attack, two wounds, courage three, and they are one, three, one for might, will, and fate. They have access to heroic channeling as you'd expect. Uh, and the good thing about these in their war gear, they have a dagger and a spear, which is very, very handy. Don't underestimate a shaman with a spear. They've uh, saved my skin on many occasions. Magical powers for the shaman are fury for only uh, Mordor orcs and transfix. And unfortunately, in this legendary legion, your shaman cannot be put on a warg. After the shaman with the option for an orc captain, a Mordor orc captain, they are fight four, strength four, defense five, two wounds, two attacks, courage three, and they have a two, one, one, might, will, and fate, as you'd expect from a captain. They have access to march. War gear options are a orc bow or a shield and you have the option to equip them either with a sword or a pick and I would highly recommend the pick uh, just for just chomping through those high defense enemies which we come across a lot now in today's game. On to our two infantry options and obviously we'll start with the Mordor Orc. They are fight three, strength three, defense four, one attack, one wound, courage two. They are your Swiss army knife in this list. You can equip them, equip them with all sorts of things uh, so you, they can make your list be what you want it to be. Whether that's an Orc bow, a shield, a banner, which is very handy, a spear or a two-handed weapon. Mordor Orcs are very, very versatile and um, you definitely need some of these in this list. And then the Orcs Big Brother, the Mordor Urukai. Fight four, strength four, defense four, one attack, one wound, courage three. Options for a two-handed mace, a banner, a shield, and an Urukai bow. The bow on these interests me quite a lot because Urukai bows are strength three. Yes, they have a uh, lower range, but yeah, I'm definitely interested in trying out a spattering of bows on these Urukais. I just think that strength three, three bow um, is far more effective than your you know, standard strength two. Especially, I, there's no point putting bows on orcs, in my opinion. Uh, a five plus shoot value, you know, they're either standing still and not getting involved in the game, uh, or just missing anyway. So, these have a, the orcs have a slightly better shoot value and a much more powerful bow. So, it's definitely if I'm going shooting with this army, they're going on the orcs. So in this legion, uh, Shagra and Gorbag have to be both in this legion, which you'd expect. It kind of takes away the character if you don't have either of those in there. Shagra will always be the leader. Uruk heroes can only ever lead Uruks, and Orc heroes can only ever lead Orcs, um, which, yeah, just keeps into that flavour of the theme and the scene of the film, because they're kind of always at each other, aren't they, Uruks and the Orcs? So yeah, I'm happy with that. That's fine. And then we move on to the legion special rules, and this is what A makes this legendary legion quite powerful in my opinion and B is hopefully like I said previously in the video uh, gonna help us see more of these profiles on the tables in the future. Um, I'd definitely be 
interested in giving this Legion a go, uh, without a doubt. Um, it, it's not top of the list. There's a couple. There's a couple that I want to build and play with first, um, but I'd definitely like to give it a go. I've got quite a few of the models already painted, uh, so it wouldn't be a, a far stretch for me to do it. Maybe. You know, if you guys want to see it, I'll, I'll get it on the um, I'll get it on the channel. And we'll do a battle report. And so that I mean, that's another thing in these videos. Any of the legions, if you want to see them in a battle report, please do let us know below, and we'll make it happen. Anyway, let's move on to the special rules for this legion. So this legion takes both Urux and Orcs into account, and as per Uglux, Scouts Legendary Legion has the special rule animosity. Animosity is a great rule. Um, it's very powerful. I think used correctly, this could decimate your opponent um, very, very quickly. So what it does, if you don't know, you've got Uruk eyes and Orcs in this list. If you have in one single combat an Uruk and an Orc involved in the same combat, both of them receive plus one to wound. That's huge especially for the Uruks who are strength four already getting plus one to wound as well. Um, and just for the simple point of sticking an orc in um it's great animosity is a great rule you're not going to get it all the time because i think anyone who's played against animosity quite a lot is definitely going to target orcs uh the weaker of the two if they've got both fire they're going to target the orcs get rid of those get rid of that plus one so you've got to be quite careful with your placement and your movement um but if you've got a captain in your list and you've got march you can get to where you want to be quite quick uh which is pretty cool next up we have rivals for power uh, this is really characterful and it's based around Shagrat and Gorbag and basically what it means if you play in this list keep track of the kills for each of those heroes if either of the two get more kills or they're at a point where they've got more kills than the other the one with the lesser kills gets to re-roll a d6 in the dual rolls um, and they do this until they catch up um, which is a great little rule it's like just it's, it basically means they're in range of a banner if you like that cannot be killed uh, constantly until they kill enough to catch up uh, to do the one and then it just flips and reverses and you know what you want to try and not do is keep them both from the same amount of kills because then you're wasting the rule um but yeah i like it i like that a lot i think it's pretty cool i like these little challenge rules it just reminds me of the the uh gimli legolas type thing which i think is awesome and it, i think it adds something else to your game as well so take away the fact that you're playing someone across the table it adds something that you've got a little bit of rivalry in your own list and it's uh, it's quite interesting and might make you do things or charge things that you wouldn't normally do if it wasn't for this rule um so for me that's a big thumbs up that's great it just keeps a lot of character in the list so yeah uh, good good work the last two special rules are solely aimed at Shelob. Um, Shelob is very powerful. Um, I think I've said it before. She, people look at the profile and get tricked by the one attack. You know, they kind of think, oh, she, I think she should be stronger. But these rules should put anyone who thinks like that at ease. The first one is She Hungers for Sweeter Meats. And basically, if Shelob is ever in combat with um, a man, a dwarf, an elf, or a hobbit, she gains an extra attack. So she gets two attacks. Now remember she's got monstrous charge, so she's knocking down when she wins in the duel, which is more than likely she's gonna do with fight six unless you roll terribly. Um, and then you're doubling your attacks, you've got four attacks to kill at strength seven. You're pretty much gonna mow through anything that you knock down and come into contact with, so that's pretty cool. And then the rule sheet is always hungry, and you call this rule at the start of any move phase, and what you do is if there's any friendly models within one inch of Shelob, you remove them from play. So it's the cost of one of your own models. But what you get in return is basically you can re-roll any number of dice in the dual roll. Any, any number of dice in the dual roll. This makes her extremely powerful um, when you consider what that actually does. Because in the dual roll, you're only taking your highest roll. So basically, if, you know, you're getting the other special rule. She hungers for sweeter meats. It's as if you're rolling four dice uh, in the dual roll because you get to re-roll those two. So for me, that's a fantastic roll. And it's kind of just making sure that she never has them slip-ups, which she, she could quite easily have with the one dice. Um, it's fantastic and it makes her very, very powerful. So that's the army composition. That's the special rules. Uh, we've looked at everything to do with the Legion. Um, again, I've, I've not played this Legion. I've theorised a bit of a list. So what I'll do with you now is I'll go over what I think my list would be if I built, built this at around 600 points. Um, and then you guys, please do let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm a crazy person and I'm missing something out? Let me know. Let's get some chat going. You've done it really well in the other videos. Um, I've been really interested to hear what you've got to say about my opinions and giving me some of yours. It's been great. It's opened my eyes, definitely. Um, so yeah, so let's have a look at my 600 point Kirithungal Legendary Legion. First name on the paper is Shagra, and I give Shagra heavy armour and a shield. Um, I give him a warband, obviously all of Uruks. In his warband he has an Uruk with shield and banner. He has then 10 Uruks with shields and he has two Uruks with 
two-handed weapons. So that is Shagrat's Warband. Next in line is Gorbag, and with Gorbag I give him 10 orcs and those orcs all have spears and shields so i want the, the extra uh defense and i want them to have a shield so they're a little bit more versatile and if i can't get them in you know if we get a crammed two crammed battle lines and it's tight to get things around they can still add a dice to the combats uh to the urukai with fight four at the front and then obviously shelob um you'd be mad not to bring shelob with the special rules in this list i think if you bring this list and you're not bringing shelob you may as well not play this list and then i have an Uruk captain with shield and he has a very small warband he has uh, four Uruks with bows and three more Uruks with shields i've added the bows in there just because there is no ranged attack uh, in my list and it's just going to give my opponent something to think about the thing with these yes the, the defense isn't where i want it to be the guys with the bows but it means that i've still got four useful dudes that I can use with a high fight value and high strength once the lines do hit and they can do something failing that once the line hits they could be objective grabbers um yeah so that that's the reason why i've added them no shaman in my list um i've not added a shaman I, for me there's not a place in my list for a shaman maybe at higher points i might put one in uh, and then add another warband of orcs get some more orcs in there uh, that was my other next thing that maybe i worry about i've not got enough orcs in there do i need more orcs to make sure that they're in them fights to get the plus one what do you guys think would you swap out that orc captain and make it an orc captain get more numbers leave the bows off uh, and just have more orcs like i say to make sure and guarantee almost uh, the plus one i've got the banner in there um he he's an orc with a shield he's pretty sturdy i've got a captain in there for the march so i can keep up with shelob and i'll be using shelob to hit um the ends of shield walls and just do a lot of damage and shagrat and gorbag will just be smashing through the middle of lines uh, i don't think shagrat will have any trouble doing that whatsoever and then gorbag even if he does uh, if they trap him he get you know he gets stuck behind enemy lines he becomes more powerful um, i think this is a really good list i think it could do quite well and i actually got a lot more in there than i thought i would considering i've got shagrat shelob and gorbag um in there at 600 points i didn't think i'd have much left but the numbers aren't too bad so come on guys let me know what do you think get your lists in the comments below i'm quite happy to read a full list uh, if you want to write your list in the comments please do um let me know what you think of the list that i wrote um and yeah let's get some conversation going let me know what legendary legions uh, you want to see next uh, that we cover in these videos we're definitely going to cover all the videos from the new book. Uh, is there any in the past that you'd like to, uh, for us to have a look at, maybe start a conversation about? Is there something you've been thinking of using? I know there's loads there that I've been thinking of using and just never got around to. So doing these videos is a good excuse for me to do that. But that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please do remember, click the subscribe button and the bell. And if you hang on for a couple of seconds, my mate Jay will have a few words and give you some info after this. But other than that, thank you guys. Keep washing those hands and I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you've enjoyed it here at Top Table Gaming. We love bringing you content that you are going to enjoy. So don't forget to check out everything else on the channel. Have a bit of a look around before you disappear and watch your next video. We've got everything from unboxings, product reviews, battle reports and everything else in between. So do have a good look around. Now I do want to, before we carry on, give a huge, huge shout out to our Patreons, which you should be able to see on screen. Without them, we couldn't do any of this. They help us fund the lights, the kits, the studio and everything that is helping us create content and push forward for you as a channel. We don't hide the content behind a paywall, but we do have benefits such as free dice and free t-shirts for our patrons as a way of us giving back as well as regular giveaways. So if that sounds good to you, do go and check out the Patreon page, link in the description below. And before you guys head out, make sure you head over to the Top Table Gaming community on Facebook. We've got over 1,500 members now and it is such an excellent community that you should totally be a part of. Check out these videos on screen now, and until next time, enjoy your hobby.